Hello everyone and welcome to our module on germ layers. In the video on embryogenesis I talked about the process of gastrulation when the embryo forms into a gastrula and a gastrula is a structure that contains the three germ layers the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. For the USMLE Step 1 exam they're going to want you to know which structures derive from the ectoderm, which from the mesoderm, and which from the endoderm. Now the reality is that there is a huge list of structures that these three layers develop into and it's very tedious and difficult to remember all of them. What I'm going to give you in this video are some general rules of thumb that you can use when you take the Step 1 exam and if you know these things it's often enough to get the question right. So first let's talk about the ectoderm and in general you can think of the ectoderm as being the germ layer that leads to the development of the outer surface of the body. So for example it forms the epidermis, it also forms the nail beds and the hair, all the things that are on the outside of your body. The only exception to this general rule is the nervous system. The nervous system derives from the ectoderm. Now you might wonder why that is the case when all the other things that come from the ectoderm are on the exterior of the body and in order to understand why the nervous system comes through the ectoderm, we need to review a little about neuroembryology. In the neurology section, I have an entire video on neuroembryology, but I'll just review some key points here related to nervous system development. So your nervous system derives from the ectoderm, and this process depends on a structure beneath the ectoderm called the notochord. Now the notochord comes from the mesoderm, and that should make sense to you because you know the mesoderm is the layer beneath the ectoderm. So this mesodermal structure, the notochord, will influence via signals the ectoderm above the notochord to transform into two little bumps of ectoderm called neural crests and a stretch of ectoderm called the neural plate which sits between the neural crests. The notochord will then further stimulate the neural plate to become the neural fold and finally the neural tube. And then this neural tube and the two neural crests will go on to develop into the entire nervous system. So the key point here is that it is your ectoderm which goes on to form your nervous system. And the reason that this is an exception to the rule that ectoderm mostly forms exterior structures is because your nervous system develops from an involution of that ectoderm to become the nervous system of the adult. So I've summarized these points in this slide here. The notochord arises in the mesoderm. This is an embryonic structure. It does not persist into adulthood. The remnant of the notochord in the adult is the nucleus pulposus of the spine, which is the structure in blue in the drawing on the screen here. The notochord induces the overlying ectoderm to become the neural plate, and then the neural plate folds into the neural tube, and the neural tube and the neural crests are what go on to become your nervous system. Most of your central nervous system comes from the neural tube and most of your peripheral nervous system comes from the neural crests. So the neural tube goes on to develop into central nervous system neurons and oligodendrocytes and astrocytes, also the retina and spinal cord. The neural crest on the other hand leads to development of most of the peripheral nervous system structures like cranial nerves, dorsal root ganglia, autonomic ganglia, and Schwann cells. And then there are some structures that are exceptions to the rule that the nervous system comes from the ectoderm. For example, your microglia, which are phagocytes, come from mesoderm and so do the meninges. Now let's talk about the endoderm. The major structure that derives from this germ layer is the GI epithelium and other structures that are derivatives of the GI tract. And I talk about this in more detail in the video on GI embryology. But for example, the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas all develop as offshoots of the GI epithelium and therefore they also come from endoderm. In addition, much of your lungs comes from endoderm. The alveoli and the epithelium of the trachea and bronchi all come from endoderm. The lungs are a little tricky because the cartilage in the airways comes from mesoderm, but the epithelial lining and the alveoli come from the endoderm. And so if your ectoderm is everything on the outside, like the skin and hair and nails, and your endoderm is the GI tract on the inside, then the mesoderm is everything in the middle. So mesoderm develops into muscles, bone, connective tissue, also cardiovascular structures, the kidneys, the lymphatics, the blood. Most things that aren't skin or GI tract derivatives come from the mesoderm. Now you will read in your textbooks about an embryonic tissue type called the mesenchyme, so let's talk about what that is. Mesenchyme is the embryonic connective tissue. It exists only in the embryo. It is not found in adults except for mesenchymal stem cells. The mesenchyme mostly derives from mesoderm. In fact, it used to be believed it was all mesoderm. There are some exceptions to this general rule, but it's mostly mesoderm, and it consists of cells surrounded by proteins and fluid that serves as connective tissue in the embryo. 
and the mesenchyme gives rise to most of the connective tissue in the adult. So for example, bones, cartilage, lymphatic, and circulatory systems, these all derive from mesenchyme, which is mostly mesoderm, and that's why these things are usually referred to as mesodermal structures. And you will hear about tumors called sarcomas, and when we call something a sarcoma, we mean that it is a tumor of mesenchymal origin, which means a tumor that is mostly of mesoderm origin, which usually means a tumor involving the bones or cartilage or some type of connective tissue. For the rest of this video, I'll go through the development of some specific organs and structures. First, let me define an important term, that is the embryonic period. This is the first eight weeks after fertilization. This is the time during which organogenesis occurs. So this is when the heart and the liver and the lungs and the kidneys all form. And it's during this period that the embryo is most vulnerable to teratogens because teratogens can disrupt the formation of an organ during the embryonic period. The embryonic period is followed by the fetal period in this this period most adult structures are established and the organs are growing but they've already formed. In the fourth week after fertilization the embryo's heart begins beating and in the sixth week after fertilization a transvaginal ultrasound can detect fetal movement and shown on the screen here is a transvaginal ultrasound and you can see the moving structure in the middle of the picture that is the fetal heart beating. Week four is when the limbs of the baby begin to form and by week eight you can see the baby moving on ultrasound. Week 10 is a very important week for development of the genitalia. Prior to week 10, the genitals look similar for male and female babies. However, at about week 10, the SRY gene, which is found in the Y chromosome in males, leads to the development of the penis. And in females, there's a lack of an SRY gene, and this leads to development of the clitoris. So by ultrasound, you can usually identify the gender of the baby by about week 15 to 20. At this point, the penis is large enough to see to identify a male child. The pituitary gland has some peculiar embryology. As you may know, the pituitary gland has an anterior portion called the adenohypophysis and a posterior portion called the neurohypophysis. The anterior portion, which secretes hormones like ACTH and TSH, is a derivative of Rathke's pouch, which is part of the ectoderm. Basically, this part of the pituitary gland forms as an outpouching of the upper mouth, which grows upward toward the central nervous system. The posterior pituitary, on the other hand, is more like a nervous system structure. It forms from the neural tube, and as you may know, the posterior pituitary is what secretes ADH and oxytocin. And finally, the adrenal gland also has strange embryology. The adrenal gland consists of a cortex, which comes from the mesoderm, and the cortex, which is the outer portion of the adrenal gland, makes the hormones aldosterone, cortisol, and also androgens. The medulla of the adrenal gland you can think of as being like a big nerve. It derives from the neural crest and it secretes hormones that also serve as neurotransmitters. These are things like epinephrine and norepinephrine. And that concludes our video on the germ layers.